My name is Alex Bianchi and I'm an incoming software engineering intern at Amazon for summer 2022 in Austin, Texas. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over the resume that got me my internship at the coveted Fang company. Now there is a lot of drama about how good of an internship Amazon is. Does it deserve to be in Fang? What's the work-life balance like? What's the culture? Uh, all those questions are valid and things that really weighed on my mind while I was applying, interviewing, and eventually accepting the internship offer with Amazon. Uh, and all of those things are going to be discussed in next week's YouTube video. So please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. But for now, I'm going to be going over the resume and a couple of interview practice tips for just practically what got me the internship at Amazon. So to kind of start off the background to everything that you're about to see on the resume, I actually do have a YouTube video that I put out last week about everything, just kind of the story of my programming and software engineering journey. So again, please be sure to go check that video out if you want the context behind any of these projects, behind the internships. Uh, all of that is on my channel. But today I'm really just gonna be going over resume formatting and things that I honestly would do differently if I were to remake this resume today. So you can see overall the resume is black and white, one column, nothing fancy whatsoever. No two column colored with bars and charts and graphs. No favorite book section, nothing like that. It's a very practical resume and that's because I wanna make sure that when the application tracking system, the ATS, or whatever robot is reading my resume receives my resume that they can actually understand it. And there are websites and ways out there that you can run your resume through one of those scanners and see like, okay, am I getting picked up? Are the keywords getting picked up? Do they know who I am, my experience? Because if you apply to a company and they your resume gets scanned and as far as the, res, the resume scanner is concerned, you have zero days of work experience in your life because it couldn't pick up the dates properly, that's not good. And and sure, a human looking at your resume might have a perfectly good understanding of your internship at Google and Lyft and Microsoft, but if the resume tracker doesn't pick up on that, then the recruiter, the real human being, is never even going to see that resume. So it's crucial that you optimize your resume for getting past that initial screening. And really, the recruiter, they might appreciate, you know, a colorful resume, but that's arguably a place for the cover, or arguably those are things that you should be doing in your cover letter and not your plain resume, because your resume, there's really no fluff to it. They want to know the experience you have. They want to know the programming languages and tools that you know, and that's it. They're not, they're not here looking to be smoothed over. That's for the behavioral interview. That's for the cover letter. That's for your email communications, whatever it is but it's not for the resume. Right below my name, you have my basic information. I chose to leave out my address because that's a little archaic. If you're building a resume and your parents are like, you gotta put your address on there. No, you don't. Uh, my GitHub link, that's very important. Uh, make sure that you update your links every once in a while. Just go through your resume, make sure the links are still live. I did run into an issue where uh, GitHub had just reutilized or at least put to rest the links that I had set up for my projects because I was running them through a URL shortener. So again, please make sure that your links are up to date every time that you go and send in your resume. I also have my www.alexanderbianchi.com and right now I think that just put port forwards to my LinkedIn and I have another Bianchi or Bianchi website, alexbianchi.tech and that just forwards to my YouTube channel. I don't actually have any fancy HTML website set up to kind of put my projects on display. That's not necessarily something that I don't think is worth your time if you're say a front end web developer looking for full time work. But when you're applying to these big relatively faceless companies, I think you're a lot better off optimizing for the kind of cold reality that is applying to these internships and studying leak code and making sure your resume gets through the scanner, then you are kind of putting that personal touch in there. And you know, I appreciate and value the personal touch as much as the next dude. And if you're applying to companies that are small enough to appreciate that personal touch, then it will be received and it might set you apart from one of the candidates. But like I said, I was applying to Amazon, Google, big startups and companies that in the end of the day, aren't really looking at that as much. Really simple underneath I have my education, super important for a student. Uh, kind of something that I'm hiding here is that I actually have an associate's degree from Brookdale Community College and as stupid as this might sound, 
I feel like it's more, it's stronger and more robust to just say, I studied at this university, you know, four, four years out of high school to this university than to say, I went to community college for two years and then university for two years. I have a really complicated academic history. I took community college classes in high school and then I went to Seton Hall for one semester. I took a semester off, then I went to Rutgers and I will communicate all of that in the course of an interview and in the course of emailing with a recruiter. But again, uh, that's just going to throw off a resume screener. That's just going to confuse the report, the recruiter who spends less than a minute looking at your resume. So if you have some kind of convoluted history, just put the simple one that gets to the point on there. And I really, you're not going to be losing any offers over this. It's not going to be like, oh, well, you lied on your resume. No, you didn't lie. You oversimplified. And I think the recruiter is going to know what's up as long as once you start actually talking to them, you are completely open and honest with everything. Uh, my GPA was relatively high. That's actually my Seton Hall GPA. It has now dropped to a 3.8 after last semester at Rutgers. So uh, not a big deal if your, res if your GPA is one point off because it just wasn't updated with the most recent values. There is a solid argument that you should be putting in relevant class work and clubs and organizations and uh, you know, did you take graduate level classes or your TA, all that stuff. And personally, I just wanted to keep the academ academia kind of part of my resume short one line. And then anything that I'm doing at school, kind of through the school, can work its way into the experience or skills section or project section instead of necessarily just having it all in one everything related to school section because I don't know that recruiters necessarily care that the class you took was at Rutgers or the project you did was at Rutgers they care that these are the projects that you did these are the class these are the things that you're skilled in um so kind of grouping everything by say university and then work doesn't necessarily make sense because as an intern, it's all kind of the same thing. You don't have that much work experience, nor do you have that much like a full degrees worth of university experience. So it's all just experience. And that's the next section that I have at the top being my Fusion Health Technologies internship, which I had last summer. Again, YouTube video about that whole process are on my channel. And I have a pretty big chunk of lines here, arguably too many. I think to really be optimal, you want to be looking at four to five lines. But I felt like the this internship was definitely the thing that I wanted to talk about the most in my interviews. It's definitely the thing that taught me the most. And it was the most robust kind of experience that I had on my resume. So I wanted to make sure that visually that's kind of what you were attracted to. And I, I do think it paid off. I think that's the, from all of the interviews I've done, we've definitely focused on that. And, and I guess it's been successful in that way. I did one interview where it was based off of the high school internship that I have on the very bottom, the data science internship, which was really just all over the place and not necessarily the best experience that I've ever had. So I only allocated a couple lines and I was like, yeah, I mean, like I'll throw these technologies that I kind of used in there just to get the keywords in there. And then I was asked about them on an interview and I couldn't exactly answer questions to the level that I should be able to given the fact that it's on my resume. Uh, then again, it is a high school internship. So how much can you really expect from a high school internship? But if you can't really expect that much from a high school internship, then why is it on your resume at all? That's one thing I would change is I would completely strip my uh, data science entre internship from this resume because in the end of the day, it's just not substantial enough. But the reason that it's on there is because it does kind of lend to this overall well-developed picture of a software engineering prospect that I think is valuable. And when you're rolling the dice, most of the time, the odds might be in your favor, but a couple of times you're gonna get asked questions about it and you're gonna lose and that's what happened to me. And I kind of tailored this inter this entire resume to focus on the Fusion Health Technologies, which was a real, actual, kind of in the weeds programming internship. And everything else was tailored to just be cool keywords that stood out in a resume screen or stood out when a recruiter scanned them and hopefully wouldn't get asked questions about because everyone was too focused on the five or six or seven lines that my Fusion Health Technologies internship took up. And I do have YouTube on there as a con as a you know content creator. 
people really love this channel. They they love seeing the communication. They love seeing the, the work put into something that isn't related to school or making money. Uh, just a passion project. I don't know. It kind of it develops me as a human being in a lot of ways. And even separate from kind of getting a job. I don't know. I just think it's a good thing to have a passion project like this. So it's definitely on there. Um, it'll probably make its way to the bottom of the resume, which you can see is just kind of like a fast facts section at some point, but I, I don't see that point being any time before my next internship. Maybe I'll have the Fusion Technologies internship, the Amazon internship, whatever internship I get my junior year summer, and then when I'm applying to new grad roles, my YouTube will probably be stripped from, uh, from the resume. Unless, hey blow this account up, give me a million subscribers. That's definitely something to brag about then. Something that's actually bad with this resume is that if you look at the ends of each line or bullet point, not every single one has a period. And I think there are even a couple of grammar errors, although I might've fixed them. Uh, there was a, a there was about a week of applying to internships where I did have a couple of grammatical errors in this resume. And that's a really big no-no. So obviously double check, give it to someone else to check, Just do whatever you do to make sure you don't make the mistake that I did. Uh, otherwise, I think the bullet points work. I think that having the dates on the right hand side work. And by the way, I didn't build this resume kind of template myself. I did get it from somewhere and I will link it in the description. Although, yeah, no, I'll, I'll link it in the description. And it's, it's a great template. It works for me. It works for other people. It's around on the internet. Uh, that's where I got. I don't know where I got it. I got it somewhere on the internet. So I, I would recommend it because it seems to be working for me and as long as you build it the right way, then it should be able to, you know, effectively get past the resume screens. Next section being the projects, structured in a PDF kind of sense, very similarly to the work experience. And I have a ray tracer, which I built. That was definitely the coolest project and I did it with the assistance of a book. So it really wasn't even all me. Um, although, I mean, you know, it's all my code, don't get me wrong. The, the book isn't just pages of code that you can copy. It just teaches you the math and philosophy and gives you some of the unit tests behind a ray tracer. And then you have to build it uh, f from there in whatever language. It doesn't even The book doesn't even pick a language for you. Uh, so that's kinda, the all the book really does is consolidate all the research that you would have to do to build your own ray tracer. And it puts it in one place, which I really appreciate. And I would really recommend the book um, link to that is also in the description. And that's also, that's definitely the biggest project that I've done. And I think part of the reason I was able to hit that scale was because I had the assistance of a book. So uh, I don't know too many books like it, but Hey, if you, if there's a book that's like how to build an HTTP server from A to Z, and you want to, you know, read that book and build the project and then put it on your resume, like you do you, I, I would be wary of something like NAND2 Tetris, which is more of like a class. Um, you know, how much, because that's not necessarily all your code. Like, you can look up the NAND2 Tetris code, uh, but if you, as long as you sufficiently go off tra off the beaten path and make it your own, put it on your resume. It doesn't matter. The next two projects are just kind of basic web dev projects, one with a simple REST API and the other with just simple front-end tools that I built both in maybe, like, four days or so, but keep in mind, that's four days going from no React JavaScript experience to building that project. Four days from no backend experience to building that project. So if you do have a little bit of experience, you're looking at a weekend project for both of these things that were enough to get me callbacks uh, from a lot of companies. Not not every company, you know, it's not hitting those super high percentages that you see some people hitting online. I'm not saying this is the perfect resume by any means. I do think that one or two substantial projects would be a lot better than these four mini projects and that having one more real substantial internship on there would also go a long ways in setting me apart. Um, but that being said, these two web dev projects, perfectly fine. And then the last Kaggle machine learning competitions, those again, kind of just in there to get the buzzwords. I did technically do them, but it's a lot of tutorials on the Kaggle website for the specific competitions that I did, but it's on there. It gets some buzzwords on there and it leads to a more substantial looking resume. So you can kind of see how pretty much at this point, half of my resume are just, you know, me do doing something just enough to get the keywords on my resume and have it not be considered a lie. And yeah, you know, that's the name of the game. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I would highly recommend that you do something similar. And a lot of people are like, how am I gonna fill up this resume? I don't have that much work experience. Like, well, spend a weekend teaching yourself some technologies, build a few projects in it with tutorials on the internet, 
combine the projects, make the projects different, spend a couple days just doing whatever you have to do to make the projects your own because you really shouldn't just be copy pasting projects and putting them on your resume. Um, and then as for work experience, just start emailing people, email local tech companies, email uh, computer science faculty and see if they need research assistance. I don't care if you're putting numbers in Excel and you write a three line Python script to help you do it. That is, that is relevant Python research experience as far as I'm concerned. And then the extracurriculars uh, kind of down here at the bottom are just things to really just round me out and get it on there. I was a restaurant manager or assistant restaurant manager in high school. I did start to help found the data science club at Seton Hall. Uh, what, what else do I have here? Uh, Buccino Leadership Institute was something I was involved with at Seton Hall. And the Crimson College Academy was a high school thing that let me graduate with my associate's degree. So those are just kind of quick one-offs that get leadershipy kind of buzzwords involved. And that's, that's, you know, that's the resume. This video has gone on long enough, so I'm going to save the lead code tips for another video. But I hope you guys enjoyed and like, comment, subscribe. Peace.